congratulate and thank mayur agrawal and team harmon india who is uh, arranging such a wonderful meeting and uh, giving me this opportunity to speak speak on new onset diabetes after transplant it is known as nodet and sometimes also known as post transplant diabetes mellitus or diabetes after transplant and sometimes the acronym is used that so what is new onset diabetes after transplant or nodet it is a diabetes occurring in previously non diabetic person after solid organ transplantation and why it is important to discuss the nodet because it increases the risk of infection and mortality as compared to classical type 2 diabetes or uh, in a non diabetic uh, in a traditional diabetes and also increases the risk of graft rejection we all know that diabetes is increasing and lot of financial burden on the population and government and family why i this put this slide because to best is prevention so if we prevent diabetes so also complications of diabetes and then transplantation will also be reduced and so post transplant diabetes will also be reduced so that is the purpose of putting this uh, slide there the overall incidence of uh, nodet is 2 to 53% of all solid organ transplantation in uh, up to 25% in renal and liver transplant you can see over here and 30 to 40% in lung and heart transplant while the incidence is much less less than uh, 10% it is in bone marrow transplant so the range is depending on the various factors like age and population studied and the various other factors so this is another uh, graph showing the incidence of type 2 diabetes um, new onset diabetes after the renal transplant and uh, after heart transplant and most of the data are with uh, renal transplant so you can see the increased risk and this is the canadian exposure following the kidney transplantation the risk of nodet is increasing the risk factors for nodet are the patients who are having pre existing risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes like family history obesity and insulin resistance signs of uh, metabolic syndrome are more prone to get no new onset diabetes and these are various non modifiable and modifiable risk factors non modifiable risk factors are uh, age of the patient age of the Uh, recipient as well as of the donor they are very important and male sex both recipient and donor and is uh, male recipient and um, higher the is more it will be the incidence of nodet and african americans hispanics hla mismatch polycystic kidneys and uh, various um, uh, genetic alleles they are uh, non modifiable risk factors then hepatitis c virus cytomegalovirus pre transplant uh, glycemic status proteinuria or other risk factors including hypomagnesemia and then modifiable risk factors are immunosuppressive therapy most commonly steroids cyclosporine tacrolimus calcineurin inhibitors mtor inhibitors that is mammalian target of rapamycin inhibitors then monoclonal antibodies and various other risk factors for metabolic syndrome so age has peculiarity these are the data from united states renal data system that older the age of donor and male sex is a strong independent risk factor 90% increase relative risk in kidney transplant recipient aging 45 to 60 years and 160% increase in risk at um, if patient is recipient is more than 60 years versus 18 to 44 years of age these are the data from uh, 34000 liver transplant and 50000 kidney transplant the donor age if it is 41 to 60 years had worse survival outcome at 3 and 12 months than those who are less than 40 years of age this is donor says better survival outcome than those who are more than 60 years of age then ethnicity relative risk of no diet is uh, 32 68% in blacks and 35% in hispanics as compared to whites probably because of the genetic diversity and variable effects of immunosuppressive uh, agents in these uh, 
group of uh, ethnic group of uh, ethnic population and tacrolimus is a potent cause of no death in blacks specifically in blacks these are various genetic alleles and uh, association we will not go into the details then pathogenesis of no death with immunosuppressive agents be it glucocorticoid or calcineurin inhibitors uh, tacrolimus and serolimus which are the most commonly used drugs so we know that steroid causes gluconeogenesis and decreases fatty acid you know, oxidation glucose uptake glycogen synthesis are inhibited and redistribution of body fat all leads to insulin uh, resistance then these uh, immunosuppressant drugs they cause mitochondrial dysfunction blood protein expression they also inhibit beta cell proliferation and function and increases the beta cell apoptosis to combine all these uh, factors there is insulin resistance and insulinopenia leading to the new onset diabetes obesity we know that it is a pro inflammatory uh, condition and uh, it increases the tnf alpha and interleukin 6 synthesis insulin resistance and diabetes uh, uh, causes insulin resistance and diabetes and there is also reduced adiponectin secretion which is already low in patients who are going undergoing uh, transplant and it is protective for diabetes then various medications the only thing re regarding the medication is glucose intolerance is reversible with these drugs that is calcineurin inhibitor and tacrolimus serolimus and no that is significantly higher in patient with uh, tacrolimus as compared to cyclosporin and it has an impact when we when manage no that the patients who develop no that then we may have to switch over from tacrolimus to serolimus then steroids they increase the the important uh, thing regarding steroids is the uh, dose and duration of the therapy and post transplant steroid dose and that increases the risk of no that by 42% <coughs> excuse me then hypomagnesemia and viral infections are there and hepatitis c virus infection positive patients has 25% incidence of nodded as compared to 14% with hepatitis c virus negative and tacrolimus if used in hepatitis c virus positive patients then the risk is increased for new onset diabetes the uh, cytomegalovirus infection and uh, this uh, calcineurin inhibitors uh, hepatitis c virus inhibitors there is no clear relationship is found between cytomegalovirus virus uh, infection and the risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus in general population but in no that their association is clearly established to diagnose uh, no that fasting and post meal plasma glucose to be uh, taken into consideration the regarding the word of cautious about a1c because it is not recommended in first three months because of the altered rbc life span after transplant due to various reasons like transfusions immunosuppressant and hemolysis so don't rely only on a1c for the diagnosis of uh, no that you have new onset diabetes in post transplant period immediately post transplant period and what are the consequences of no that are in decrease graft function because of the diabetic nephropathy hypertension or lower immunosuppressant doses decrease patient survival because of increased in incidence of sepsis infection and cardiovascular disease and increase risk for cardiovascular disease because of all known reasons hyperinsulinemia glucose tolerance hypertension dyslipidemia and insulin resistance these are 2003 international consensus guidelines to evaluate the patient pre transplant and uh, as usual complete history glucose glycemic status and the high risk patient should be identified and counseling should be done to reduce weight diet and exercise and pre transplant treatment of hepatitis c virus should also be taken care of in post transplant period individualization of the immunosuppressive therapy fasting plasma glucose weekly for first month then at 3 and 6 months and 12 months and then at least annually after first year and depending on clinician's acumen it may be discretion it may be it may vary earlier or later and oral glucose tolerance can also be considered this is the same but those patients who are found to be noted positive 
they should be taken uh, fasting plasma glucose lipid levels should be carefully monitored a1c and diabetic complications should also be taken care of and this is cgm after kidney transplantation in non diabetic patients early hyperglycemia is very frequent then may herald post transplantation diabetes mellitus and graft failure so it can be used in hyperglycemia appears to be a nearly constant characteristic immediately following transplantation in non diabetic kidney recipients and higher blood glucose values could identify patients at risk for later on uh, uh, new onset diabetes a word about insulin uh, rss ti recommendations that insulin therapy should be a preferred choice during the first one to two, two months of time post transplant and later on the treatment should be or diabetes should be managed as standard protocol the patient who develop new onset diabetes there should be modification of immunosuppressive medication depending on the condition rapid steroid tapering or steroid sparing protocol tacrolimus or cyclosporine therapy should also be considered and calcineurin inhibitor and mTOR inhibitor combination should be avoided because they have increased risk of um uh, new onset diabetes as compared to uh, other immunosuppressive agents and rest of the uh, management of uh, uh, diabetes is as per standard protocol we will not go into the details because most of the things are already discussed and dr mayur is there who is taking all the all the topics to cover it so no date prognosis is associated with higher mortality compared to type 2 diabetes higher graft rejection graft survival in no date is 48% versus 70% in patients without no date and diabetic microvascular complications develop very rapidly in new onset diabetes as compared to classical or traditional diabetes mellitus so it should be taken care of then this is china liver transplant registry data noted after the liver transplant median follow up of 2.6 years and noted predictors are new onset hyperglycemia less than 30 days icu stays more than 15 days and as more than 50 years bmi more than 25 hepatitis c and cytomegalovirus infection again corticosteroid at discharge one interesting finding was uh, from this study was this registry was patients of no date who are on hypoglycemic treatment had poor prognosis and higher hepatocellular carcinoma recurrence as compared to those who are without treatment then no date after heart transplant this is this uh, data from 300 more than 300 heart transplant and incidence is 32% risk factors are again same bmi cytomegalovirus infection and is no date after kidney transplant the in calcineurin inhibitor it is 20% uh, about and that is uh, it develops just uh, within first three six months of the uh, transplant in calcineurin inhibitor patients and after lung transplant you can see it is from the organ procurement uh, transplant network more than 3500 single or double lung transplant and no date incidence is 33.4% and uh the risk factors are again uh, as bmi and hepatitis c virus infection no date after allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation that is bone marrow transplant is uh, incidence is 6.5% these are the incidence from 600 adults with various hematological malignancies uh, sir I'm sorry for interfering sir two more minutes sir yeah yeah okay i will finish in two minutes okay cautious use of sglt2 inhibitors this is review of literature and meta analysis 16 studies and 300 patients is found to be safe in short term but should uh, large studies are required another study another review of literature nine studies 140 patients again it is safe and they have uh, planned a new registry because of the limited evidence in this population another review of uh, literature six published studies and they says that there is no risk of uh, rejection or diabetic ketoacidosis and safe in short term but large long term randomized controlled studies are required so take home message is incidence of no date is up to 50% 
It is positively associated with pre-dark transplant glycemic status and obesity. Advancing age and male sex are important risk factors for both recipients as well as donor. Immunosuppression drugs, steroid dose and duration, also hepatitis C virus and cytomegalovirus, they also contribute to the um, incidence of NODET. NODET is associated with decreased survival and increased graft rejection. A1C should be uh, carefully or judiciously analyzed in first three months. And word of cautious uh, use of intensive insulin therapy and glitazones and SGLT2 inhibitors because of the risk of pyonephrosis, sepsis, and uh, uh, should be kept in mind. Thank you very much.